We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available on Amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. Today's show is about eh, what, I, what I feel like talking about today. Uh, I want to thank you for watching the show. It's a half hour show and uh, you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio. Yes, Good Talk Radio is back and on Spreaker and several other platforms. Uh, and if you just go down to the description below, you find all the different formats to listen to Easy Street. What do we talk about in Easy Street? <laughs> Whatever we want. <laughs> so that's the cool part. So uh, anyway, well, welcome to your show. Uh, I, I kind of want to talk about all oh, the COVID stuff and a little bit of just generalization what's going on. So what's happening is, you know, we've all been in lockdown and quarantine and all that good stuff. But um, um, now people are going, okay, enough is enough. And of course, I've even done a show going enough already. And so really, the what a lot of people are starting to think, and I think I'm kind of thinking the same way, is there's, we're not going to stop this stuff. It's going to happen. And so uh, uh, then the data is so nobody knows what to believe anymore. So we, uh, uh, I think we're all getting to a point of if I get it, I get it, and let me get, go through it and let me get uh, you know, through it and be able to fight it later. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those, I don't think we're going to be able to avoid it. Um, gosh, they're talking about tracking people who have or haven't had it, things like that. And this sounds ridiculous. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, it's it's the drugs. Anyway, um, so uh, uh, what do you do? So we're crippling our nation. We're crippling. The world's crippled. Our economy's going a pot we got to get back to work and so it really comes down is the cure worse than the actual disease so i i'm kind of leaning with the rest of people's like let her rip people let's do it let's get in there still use common sense try to do uh um, spacing between each other and all that good stuff put mask on when we can and uh let's go to work and uh uh, see how well we do. I imagine once we go back to work, we will have an insert or a surgence of, uh, uh, of cases, but, uh, I think we ought to rip through it instead of panicking. I think we're actually panicking too much. And I think really our media had a lot to do with that. And then of course, uh, you know, the end of the world's coming tomorrow. According to, uh, <laughs> I'm watching Chris Green. <laughs> he was, uh, on AMTV. He was talking about, he was, I don't know why he's in Hawaii, by the way. If everybody knows why he's in Hawaii, please in the comments tell me why. Anyway, so I think one is being on the island and the fact that he's quarantined. I think he's kind of losing it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so he has a dream that we have uh, invasions coming on on Monday and Tuesday, basically from a dream he had. So, uh, uh, or it's a metaphor. Anyway, uh, he's I, his. Sh so his partner here in Arizona seems to be a little more grounded, but he's like, I think I'm pretty sure he's drinking way too many tropical itches. So anyway, um, yeah, I've been away. Um, so he's freaking out. Uh, then Marfugo, um, he's been doing really good about reporting all the different inter interesting things coming up. Some, you know, and between that and Paul Begley, which, uh, he, he has a guy called Mike from around the world. It comes on every Thursday night. Um, there's definitely some things being concerned about, about overhead objects <laughs> as far as uh, uh, asteroids and breakups and things like that and unusual weather and unusual um, radiation coming in from the sun and, and uh, our magnetic fear. Um, <laughs> magnetic fear. I, I can't even say it today. Um, magnetosphere. <laughs> I sound like Mark Frugal now. Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, so it's getting concerning, and there's also some real close encounters coming up 
as far as asteroids and things like that. And so just like the, the good book says, look up. When is the, um, perhaps our redemption is near. But the big part is, uh, and I've mentioned it in shows before, if you have faith, you'll get through all this just fine. Understand why it's happening. Uh, obviously, the intensity is higher, the whole works, but I'd love to hear how, in the comments, how well you're coping with this stuff. Do you think it's time to go back to work? Do you agree that maybe we should just kind of like let her rip? We're all going to get exposed to it one way or another. And uh, can we just continue sitting there letting our economy plummet? And, our, uh, and by the way, don't pay attention to the stock market. That is insane. When you have 22 million people unemployed and and uh, businesses closed, no income coming in, and the stocks are going up, that's it's broken. It definitely is. And and I you know I've talked about gold and silver a little bit. Uh, I actually bought a little bit of silver like a month ago, and uh, I also noticed silver in price. And I don't think it's so much that silver went up as it did demand went up. So uh, like a little uh, silver eagle was going for like eighteen something uh, for um, uh, an ounce uh, coin to like twenty three dollars now. So it's it's gone. ounces plus I already had some in, from Pat from the past so kind of nice to have a little silver don't know whether or not I should really have it but maybe you know in 10 years after I croak and my kids get it, it'll be worth like $30 an ounce <laughs> who knows <laughs> um, but yeah I really like to hear your comments about your latest observations about what the heck's going on um, you know, you, you watch the news and they'll say, oh, the hospitals are over and you go to the next news and they tell you the hospitals are empty and you go to another news and they're laying off doctors and nurses. And it's like, what is going on? It's almost like even the alternative news, uh, because, you know, they can only go by the articles that they're reading. It's just not making sense. And then of course, all the data coming from the other countries. Some are ashamed to tell their numbers. Others are really truthful. Uh, China, we don't know what's going on in China. But uh, I think the other big thing is um, the big talk about tracking people, uh, whether they had the, the virus or not. Um, we're really getting into some serious territories there. Whoever thought when you read the Bible, like some of the things they said, like, you know, Israel become its own nation. It did in 1967, or I don't have my dates exactly right. You thought that'd be impossible, but it happened. And then you read about things about the mark and things like that. And, and then you look at today's stuff and what they're talking about. And we're going, oh my gosh, how could this have possibly happened? You know, it's like, because you read the Bible and you go, ah, that's a little far-fetched, you know, mark, forehead, arm. And all of a sudden, Guess what they're talking about? It's like, how did the world change so much um, that the Bible is coming true? Amazing, actually. And then, of, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, uh, Chris Green, he's pretty convinced that the um, Antichrist is going to be an alien. <laughs> pretty sure of it. <laughs> Which makes sense. It could be like some guy is really like, awesome and has got really good ray guns. He says, I'm going to run the world now. He's like, okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to track all of you at the same time uh, by putting a mark on your hand or a chip or something. Um, hey, as crazy as things, if you really think about the last couple of decades and stuff, as crazy as some of this stuff's going on, um, and then actually see it happening, I don't write off anything anymore, do you? <laughs> Once again, leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, this is this insanity. And uh, I don't know anybody. I think every word is person I've met is using the same terminology. Insanity. Can't believe it. Is shocked. Don't know what to think and don't know what to believe. So what do you believe? Um, what, what's your overall consensus of what's going on or are all of us just going what <laughs> like 
Are you prepping? Are you getting prepared? Are you, you know, maybe brushing up on your faith a little bit? Maybe uh, trying to understand what's going on? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, really, I take the time and leave comments. It gives us something to talk about for the next show. Um, I, do you think all this is just a bunch of hogwash? Do you think that coronavirus is a fake? I don't believe that part, but, um, and then, you know, they're trying to say, well, it was created or is intentionally done. Well, it could have been created. It could have accidentally been released. I just don't believe any country, I don't care how cruel they are, would actually release this thing in their own country to get even with us or somebody else. I, I don't think people are that crazy. I think that they could have been working on something and a mistake happened. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, reporting and embarrassment and all that stuff. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I can believe that, you know, like China probably was hiding it the best they could because of uh, the safe face. And really, every country wants to save face. Also, I'm kind of curious, like, do you guys, uh, some of these, you ever notice the, there's like a handful of uh, governors that are just sh uh, showboating like crazy. So uh, there's only like five or six of them. And, you know, it's 50 states, right? And yet the same five or six um, governors are just showboating. I don't have this. I don't have that. And then you come to find out they've got it. Or, you know, like... New York says, oh, I don't have enough respirators. Now he's got too many. He's, he's, he's got a, you know, sh it's like, come on. He's showboating all the way. Just if you need something, you don't need to go public on it and tell the media. Get on the phone. Call Trump. Call the support group and uh, other companies and, and quit whining and complaining to the media and start whining and complaining to the people that need to listen and actually deliver those things that you need. Um, that's what I, I, I just cannot stand the showboating stuff. Enough with the politics. Um, really, when the elections come along, we'll find out whether you did a good job or not. <clears throat> and of course, you know, watching Congress play their games, it's like, can you just pass the bills that we need to get small business uh, covered so they can survive this thing or or sh quit let's stop the quarantine and let's get back to work and and not worry about more loans or whatever but um stop already once again what's your opinion you think everything's cool you like the way your governor's handling things do you like the fact that you're watching your friend's business sink um do you have friends that have business do you have friends that have the covid um, do you feel like maybe we're rushing too fast to open things up that's more serious than we think it is? Obviously, people like my age, uh, people that have other conditions and stuff, really are at risk. But is it any different than the flu? And If I had diabetes and got the flu, would I have the same concerns? If I had a heart trouble and got the flu, would I have some of the same concerns? If I was in my 80s and got the flu, would I have some of the same concerns? And how do those numbers compare to today's numbers? And of course, why is it so hard to get good data? The data doesn't seem to be consistent. Nobody can seem to actually have the right data. And it's like, it's like there's a hundred people all showboating to try to get on top of this thing with statistics or, or vaccines or cures, and none of them are talking to each other. And it's like, once again, what do you think about that? Um, what do you think about all this asteroid stuff? What do you think about, um, you know, uh, that our Earth itself has got some issues? Do you think it's climate change uh, fr from uh, from humans, or do you think it's just climate change? To me, it's got. A, I think there's a climate change, but I think it's natural because. If you could look at history and all, like some places like here used to have vast jungles and they have evidence of all kinds of, of a different kind of landscape here. Um, in some desert areas used to be oceans and stuff. I'd say there's been climate changes before. I don't think it's because we drive cars. Um, love to hear your opinion on that too. 
So if you're watching this show today, break out the pen, <laughs> get down in the comments, and let's hear from you. Um, and good, bad, or indifferent, all I ask is please be professional. Um, I, I, I'm a simpleton. I, I agree. I, I am a redneck. I am not um, uh, super qualified to be giving opinions of what's right or wrong. I can. I'm just your general Joe, general Joe <laughs> person that's just trying to get through this, trying to understand it. And so we got a lot of intellectual people out there. They're really hammering out there, and and I might might tip my hat to them, but um. Uh, but most people are kind of like me. We're just kind of this, you know, trying to figure this stuff out and uh, and get through life. And so us little people have to have little shows like this because we're little people. <laughs> and uh, and um, I don't do you. All I know is before I move on to the next module here, please take the time to leave a comment. Tell me what you're thinking about what's going on lately. Uh, what's your biggest beliefs? Do you think this week is going to be some disastrous things going on? And uh, then, of course, Mike from around the world on Paul Bigley, he says uh, the 12th, I think it was, that we're going to have something catch our eye, get our attention. All right. Well, get my attention, guys. Leave a comment. You know when the time comes, you have Ranger Rob poopy bags. They're strong. They're wider, they're deeper, and can handle the job. Available at Amazon with free shipping. Alrighty, guys, we are back. And I'm um, excited to hang out here around Ju uh, Jupiter here. It's amazing where I can get this chair to go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, you get a little bit of seasickness here watch, watching us float around space here. But, hey, what the heck? <laughs> so, anyway, so... My next question I have for you guys is uh, has to do with prepping. So with all this going on, first of all, I still can't believe there's no damn toilet paper. What is up with the toilet paper? Um, <clears throat> is people still hoarding it or is it literally just not happening? What's going on with the toilet paper? I go to the grocery store, no toilet paper. And luckily I'm stocked up, so I am a prepper. I stocked up a lot. And in fact, my wife used to go, was like, really, do we need two cases of toilet paper here all the time and paper towels? And I was like, well, it's for prepping. And so luckily we did that months ago. And now I'm going, thank gosh, we did that. Um, but eventually it's like, well, you know, uh, I have to replenish this stuff. And uh, which was still in great shape. But every time I go to the grocery store, it's like, are you kidding me? It's still empty. Um, then I saw like a case of maybe, I don't know, six or something like that. I did see it at the store for a short time, uh, sitting off there on the side for like 12, almost $13 for six of them. It was like, uh, that seemed a little pricey. So anyway, it's kind of, kind of odd. I, I just, uh, uh, I just, that mystifies me why they're having trouble with that. But I guess the other thing that's driving me crazy is that uh, some of the things they're doing with food uh, because they can't process it. Uh, I, it's like, really, we need to get back to work because uh, uh, if we're throwing food away because we can't process it, um, which also means farmers are making it and they can't get paid because there's no demand, uh, it's just a chain reaction. We need to fix this. Uh, we need to get back to work. And yes, we probably have to pay the consequences. But uh, getting back to prepping is, have you become more like, instead of think all of us were insane for being preppers, that maybe you're going, oh, maybe they're on to something. Uh, are you, or maybe you're doing your prepping now when we wish you weren't because we can't get our normal items because everybody's hoarding. Um, but has your opinion changed at all as about being a little more prepared for emergencies? Um, are you cooking differently? Are you finding that you're trying to get more bang for the buck? Are you uh, getting things that you can keep long term? So we're fortunate in this kind of crisis because we still have water and electricity. Now, imagine taking this a little farther and maybe electricity and water might be an issue. Well, luckily, you don't have to deal with that now. But take this opportunity to say, OK, 
I'm getting through this. I'm learning how to prep for just basics like this. But um, what if next time we have a grid situation, a problem? And I'm thinking a grid problem could be one is a solar sun thing, or maybe we do have um, uh, we just get a surge of too much uh, radiation into our atmosphere and it fries our systems or something like that, or or we're attacked and they use EMPs um, or things like that. Um, after seeing all the things going on in the world, nothing surprises me anymore. And that's what I'm talking about with you guys is like, do you want to be surprised anymore? At least I can go and say, gosh, I'm really glad I prepped. And could you have said that when this happened? And so there's going to be other things in the future. So uh, are you thinking about it a little harder? Are you starting to say, oh, maybe we ought to start setting aside a, a room and a, maybe put some extra shelves in and store extra food and 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 what about cooking for for example what i've done is i have those you know camping you get the little coleman stoves and it takes a little green uh, uh propane uh, canisters so for months and months and months i would buy two three two to six canisters of propane um every time i go out and so i've got like a surplus of 24 maybe 30 canisters of propane so I can heat water, cook water, and, 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 and get by for at least a month or two uh, quite easily. Um, I'm hoping actually more than that. Uh, and I still buy propane canisters just for that fact that I may have to heat water or disinfect water. Um, so that's one of my solutions for cooking. Now, I don't have the ideal area. I live in Arizona and not a whole lot of wood and things like that, but I, I can't really cook or build fires because uh, there's really no source for uh, burning. So I have to be kind of, I have to look into things that um, like propane or some other kind of fuel or something like that I can use to create heat to heat water up if I didn't have electricity. Our other big problem here is we, boy, you wouldn't want to grid down uh, situation in the summer here in Arizona because uh, we depend on trying to cool our houses where other people are trying to keep their houses warm. Um, it would be tough to go through the summer here with no air conditioning. Uh, it can be done. Um, a lot of people put sheets up in their doors and they'll wet them down and the breeze helps keep things cool and stuff. But you'd be just kind of sulking around, depressed, not moving around because 100, 110 degree weather is six the life out of you. Um, so if it happened in the summer for us, we'd be really crippled by by that problem. Um, another thing is filtering water and things like that. And one of the things they say is advantages if you have a pool like we do, we have a pool for several weeks, you can, if you had a good water filter system, you can take water out of your pool, run it through a filtering system like a good one, and literally store up on more water, which I have tons of water stored, but if I really had to go high volume, I could steal it out of the pool, run it through a really good um, filtering system, and then I have uh, several storage empty um, container water things uh, with tablets and things that keep that water uh, safe. So I actually have a water storage that would last several weeks before the chlorine would start wearing out in the pool. Um, and I also bought one of those big tank things you put in your bathtub. So as soon as I catch wind that we have a problem, I pull that thing out. It's like a big, uh, uh, I don't know, bladder type thing. You, you put it in your bathtub and fill it up with water. And then I have the droplets that I can add into it to uh, make the water safe. And I uh, actually can store at least um, uh, I don't know how many gallons that is, uh, 55 gallons or so of water just in my bathtub alone in a tank that's sealed. It's not like just filling the bathtub up. It's actually a bladder thing you put in your bathtub. I actually have one of those. And uh, of course, I've got tons and tons of uh, Desanti water. The reason I use Desanti, their bottles are built strong and, and tough and for storage. I bought some of the other ones and it's like they were kind of, uh, some of them would leak, some of them wouldn't stack very well. 
and uh, I just didn't trust them. So I've been spending a little more money on Desanti because of the quality of their plastic bottles. So yeah, I'm kind of, kind of curious as like uh, if, if you started doing prepping and then have you like, if you're already a prepper, have you learned that uh, what you could have done better? There's a few things I, I've, I, I could have done better. Um, but then to add to it, what if we had this scenario and you're hunkering down, um, how would you compensate for water and um, electricity issues? Um, that would be my big thing. Uh, the next question for you. And uh, how would you, you know, uh, how would you cook? And then, uh, of course, the other thing is like, well, would you bug out? And one of my concerns about bugging out is, as soon as you're out in the, if you're out in the street bugging out in a power, so you're like a target. I mean, people are just like, hey, look at that guy bugging out. Let's let's mug him, take his pack. He's probably got lots of cool stuff in it. It's like advertising. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm bugging out. I get tons of good stuff in my pack. Come shoot me. Um, so yeah, um, of course, you know, that's assuming we may not have cars or we don't have fuel. Um, is your bug out area so far away that you can't get to it in one take of gas? Do you even need spare gas? Can you carry extra gas? So yeah, there's a lot of questions. It's like, you need to play the scenario. Yeah, do you have a safe place to go? I have one, but it's too far away. It's like 15, uh, 1200 miles away in a bad scenario. You know, the, if cars weren't working and stuff, the roads would be messed up. There'd be dead cars in the road. And it's like, how would I even get there? Uh, unless I find somehow I make some kind of bug out area that's closer. And uh, here in Arizona, you know, you got the Flagstaff area and up in there and stuff, but you know, everybody and their neighbor and hillbillies are all up there. It's like, you better, you better be savvy. <laughs> that's all I can say. Or you decide at my age is like, does it make sense to bug out? If I can stay here, would I, I just hold my ground and pull out my guns and defend what, what I got? I think that's the route I have to go. Might be different if I was younger and had kids. So anyway, I was curious about what you've been thinking about prepping and what have you learned? Are you just still going, ah, it's not worth it. Uh, nothing bad's gonna ever happen. Uh, I'd be curious in your comments below, uh, has prepping become part of your life? Uh, have you been awakened? Well, guys, we're getting to the end of the show and I wanna thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to go down in the description to find out where you can listen to Easy Street. Also, don't forget that we are on Good Talk Radio, and we appreciate that. So come on down, check us out, check out Good Talk Radio. We also ask if you're on Good Talk Radio, if you take the time to maybe give us a donation, kind of help uh, cover some of the costs that run radio stations. It's not a cheap thing to do, along with all this equipment and software we buy. So we do appreciate that very much. Uh, we depend on people like you. Uh, um, if you haven't heard from Mark Fugel or some of them, the advertising revenue is not the way to go. It doesn't help. And sometimes we do videos that they don't want to monetize. And and that's okay. We don't mind. But uh, the way we get by is by help from people like you between donating to our uh, uh, radio station or uh, through that way or uh, buying our Range of Rob poopy bags that helps us out. So those you can find on Amazon. So thank you once again for watching. Uh, please leave your comments below. Please be professional. Until next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.